Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about this little gadget here. And I say gadget, even though it looks like a monitor, but it's not. It's actually a lot more than just a monitor. So I'm doing this video mainly because you guys asked for it. Uh, pretty much every time I would post like a photo online or some behind the scenes footage of me working and I had this monitor mounted on one of my various cameras, uh, f almost every time somebody would be asking me like, oh, you know, what's this monitor or how come you're using it or what do you think of this monitor? Uh, so finally I thought I would, uh, you know, I would actually do a video and, and answer most of your questions. So for those of you who don't know, this is a, a monitor by Port Keys. This is the BM5 model. Um, and it's a really cool little monitor because other than just simply displaying, you know, the signal coming in from your camera, it can actually be used to control different cameras. And in here right now I have the ZKM-E2 and I have the Packet 4K, but I've used this also with the Packet 6K. I've used it with uh, my Sony A6500. Uh, you can even use it with like Canon cameras and I think pretty much most of the cameras out there it's, this is gonna work with. Uh, so first kind of roughly I'll tell you the sort of the main cool features about it is that it's a very bright monitor. And here I'm in a studio, I don't really need it to be that bright, but when I'm filming outside, this thing is amazing because it's 2200 nits. It's a 5.2 inch, I believe, uh, size screen. So it's a nice size, it's not too big, not too small either, but I kind of find it perfect for these smaller cameras too. Another really cool thing is that it's a touch screen, so I can actually go in and for example, zoom in here, you can see, I can, you know, move around, like see how my shot looks, I can zoom out. Uh, you can turn that off if you don't want to, um, but again, if you want to, you have it there. Uh, it does have buttons there on the top that you can use to navigate the menu and you can change all kinds of settings. Very simple to change the settings. Uh, so one of the really cool features too is that you can load in uh, lookup tables or LUTs so that you can preview how your different cameras will look in case your camera doesn't allow uh, basically LUT preview. So you can go in here and you can load in the LUTs and the, another cool thing is is that you can actually store the LUTs in this monitor. It can store up to I believe like a hundred LUTs. Uh, I've, I've never maxed it out but anyways you have it in case you want it. Uh, you can, for example, go here, you can change the color temperature, backlight, like the, you know, basically how your colors look and all that stuff. But you can see up here, you can have 15 by 9, 1.33, uh, you know, aspect ratio, like all these different aspect ratios and, and basically de squeeze. So if you're shooting anamorphic, uh, again, you can do all of that. So right now, I'll just go back to 16 by 9. Uh, you can update the firmware, you can do a whole bunch of things, and it's nice and easy to kind of navigate the menu using the, this uh, th this little wheel there on the top. Now, what I have set up here, I have four custom buttons. Uh, my my One of my custom buttons is, you can see, waveform. So you can see the waveform full screen, and then I see my uh, the actual view from the camera, and this little kind of a, a view there in the corner. Uh, I also can switch it so I can have my waveform here, I have the RGB here parade, I have vector scope, so that's another really cool thing, not many monitors have that, like a proper vector scope, and then here in this corner I can still see what I'm seeing uh, through my camera. Uh, I can also do it where I can see a bigger view of what the camera basically is showing me the display, and then here I have my audio displays, I can have you know, all kinds of things, like you can see you have your histogram here, the RGB histogram, you have the, the you know, Luma histogram, I have again the waveform, the vector scope, and the RGB parade. Again, all this stuff, and it's you can just easily kind of cycle through it. And then if I want to, I can have full screen view, and then here in the corner, I can have my waveform. And again, you can customize this. There could be, let's say, a vector scope up here or whatever. So all of that is fully customizable. So that's on one of my custom buttons. The next custom button is uh, false color. So false color is a, another, I think, a really great way of judging exposure. Really helpful if you're working, for example, with like green screen or stuff like that, and if you're trying to light like a nice and even green screen, well, uh, vector scope, I mean, a uh, false color is gonna be the perfect way to make sure that the green screen is evenly lit. Uh, but also it, it's, it's a great tool just to have for, for overall, just judging your exposure. And I do actually have a video in case you guys don't know how to uh, use um, a false color. You, can, you guys can check out that video. Uh, anyways, so my next here button is the focus speaking. So I can again toggle on and off. And then here, my first here button is I have my camera controls. I have an on and off. 
So right now I'll turn it back on and you'll notice basically what I can see here on the screen is I have a little record button and then I have, up here I have what it says focus and then I have TW which is for zooming in and out. This lens is not powered so I can't really zoom in and out but I can, can control focus if I want through it. I can also start and stop the camera. So you see right now it's recording, it's telling me there and I can stop it and it stops recording. So that's, that's another cool thing. Um, now if I want, I actually have more, just like these three little dots there on the bottom and it shows me that I can actually uh, basically go through these different menus. So I can swipe left and right and I can have here, uh, for example, this menu, you can see I have controls for zoom, iris or focus. You can set your marks and all that stuff. And that's because you can actually connect this monitor to control your Tilta Nano, for example, mo motors for controlling your focus or zoom and all that stuff. Really cool thing. And you can, this way you can remotely basically, while you're looking at the monitor, control that. And you can also set marks A and B and you can you can kind of go back and forth. So that's a really cool thing. I don't have the, the Tilta motors right now, so I can't show you how that works, but I heard it works really well. <laughs> Uh, next screen here that I have, I can, for example, go to the menu and change the different settings on this camera. This is right now controlling the Zcam E2. And if you've watched my review of this camera, you'll know that I love this camera, but what I don't love about it are the, the buttons, basically, and the way you navigate through the menu. Well, now it's easy. I can, for example, click here. The menu will actually pop up, as you can see, and I can scroll easily now through the menu here in the camera. And, you know, if I want to click something, let's say, go deeper into the menu, I can easily kind of navigate up and down. Uh, it just makes changing settings so much easier. And you also have the function buttons, one, two, and three, so I can also customize these. And then if I want, let me exit the menu, I can, for example, change. For example, here, my function button number two is for variable frame rates. So now I can easily and quickly switch, let's say, to my variable frame rates, right? And click OK once I'm happy. And right now I'm not going to switch it, but yeah, you get the point. So having this monitor makes switching basically all the settings within the Z2 and just controlling this camera and, and you know, just makes it makes it a pleasure to work with. Whereas if you have any other sort of normal monitor, then and then you have to rely on actually using these buttons on this camera, then it's a, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Um, so anyway, so that's a cool thing. So as you can see, you can control that. And then if I keep on, you know, basically swiping, I have another screen. So here, for example, I also have these quick buttons for shutter. And I can easily, again, you know, adjust the shutter setting, go up and down. Uh, I can go, you know, adjust the iris, right? So again, I can go up to f4 and go back to f2.8. I can change my ISO, I can change all kinds of things. So again, variable frame rates, Calvin, the temperature, all that stuff. And I still have my record button. And then if I swipe again, I'm back to my focus, basically, here screen. And I can, you know, focus this way. Um, or, or I can do zoom in and zoom out. So anyways, as you can see, really cool feature because it really, again, it takes this camera that has, again, it's a great camera, but it just has a few of these kind of, I think, handicaps uh, like those them buttons on it and just means that now you can operate the, the, all this whole camera just using the touch screen right on the monitor. And I think it's a more intuitive way of doing it because you're usually going to be looking at the screen, looking at what you're actually recording. And to have all your buttons right there also too, is just, just makes it a lot easier. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can use this with the packet 4K or 6K camera. Uh, in this case, I have the 4K here that I'll plug it into. And, and by the way, to connect this monitor to control the Zcam and or many other of these cameras, you basically have this little camera control cable. Now for co actually controlling the packet uh, 4K or 6K cameras, because the packet cameras don't have a camera basically control, um, you know, plug-in, uh, they can only be co connected to and controlled using Bluetooth. Uh, the cool thing that the guys at Porky's came up with is this little Bluetooth module in the back that you attach. Has a little antenna like this. You can actually, it comes with a longer antenna. Uh, by the way, this whole thing comes with a, a little here um, case for the monitor. And inside the case, it's nicely padded. And as you can see, you have this other antenna. It's much bigger. This is for, again, if, if you're gonna, let's see, you have this much further from your camera, then this will work for longer range. You have like little cables. You have, for example, power cables. So you can actually power uh, the monitor using uh, DTAP. Uh, you can power it using, for example, here I have another cable that connects to DC. 
as uh, so we which I'm, when I whenever I have this on top of my Zcam, I'm actually powering it off of the battery that I also used to to power the Zcam um, with. Uh, you have other like cables and stuff like that. You actually have another like a screen which I never really used it, but you can see it's still in the perfect in the wrap. But you can put this. It's like a gorilla protective screen, um, things like that. And then like I said, you have the case. Anyways, when you're connecting it, like I said, the monitor to control the packet 4K or 6K cameras, you're going to use the Bluetooth. So I'm going to press my custom button here for the camera control. And I'm going to go now and enter basically and switch to the different uh, basically camera. So as you can see, you have the Blackmagic Packet Cinema camera, you have Panasonic different cameras, you have Sony cameras that I can control through LAN. You have the Sony that you don't use the LAN, you have Canon that uses LAN and Canon that don't use the LAN, you know, basically control. It even has presets for Sony A7R3, uh, A7R2, and then you here you have the Blackmagic Packet 4K. Um, so I'm going to enter that, and this will work the same if you want to control the, the 6K uh, camera. So I'm going to enter that, and now I can exit. And once I'm out of there, uh, basically what you'll see here on the top is there's like a little Bluetooth uh, icon. Now when you're going to be connecting this monitor for the first time using Bluetooth to the packet 4K or 6K cameras, uh, then you got to obviously make sure you turn on the Bluetooth here settings in the camera. So you go to setup, go to Bluetooth, make sure it's on. And then here on the monitor, you'll see the little Bluetooth icon. Uh, if you turn on the camera control and your camera will show up here as a new device. So you will click on that. And then once it detects it, it's going to give you a code here. So you type in that code. And click pair. And it's going to just take a second. And by the way, you only have to do, go through this process the first time you're connecting it. After that, basically, the, it's stored in the memory, I think, of the monitor or the camera. Uh, either way, the, the devices will recognize each other. Now, if you ever have problems, like let's say if you want to add another monitor, but let's say it's not displaying, because you can obviously control, like I said, multiple Blackmagic Packet 4K or 6K cameras. Uh, if you ever have problems where it's like doesn't want to recognize it, then all you do is you just disconnect this little Bluetooth cable that's in the back uh, and just plug it back in and it will kind of reset it. Uh, so you, you'll, you'll be able to see the camera basically in there. But, but anyways, as you can see uh, up here right now on the screen, we have basically all the settings here for our Pocket 4K camera. So I can go in now and I can change my frame rate. I can, you know, turn on, for example, the off-speed uh, frame rate recording and I can change, you know, how many frames per second I want. I can turn it off. I can change my resolution, my what codec I want to record in, what compression ratio, all that stuff I can change. If I want to go to the next screen again, I just swipe it. Uh, and then in here it shows you, for example, the ISO. So I can change the ISO, the iris, or the shutter. And again, you can use this little here knob, or you can use these little buttons here on the left and right. Um, if you want, again, you can go to another screen. Here you can control with the sliders, the white balance, the tint, or you have your different presets here, so you can change it using this. Um, next screen here, let's go. We have the, the, you have the record button also in the corner, so you can hit record, as you can see it's recording now, and you can stop it. Uh, and then also, now you can see I'm, I'm setting focus, so I can uh, control the focus of this lens, and that's actually something that's really cool, because, uh, for example, if for most of the, when I would say, when it comes to adjusting settings on my packet cameras, I, I think I would just I just prefer to do it right there on the screen because it's it's just easier like the screen works and everything where I guess this would come in really handy is if let's say um, like let's say if you're recording yourself and you want to be able to adjust the settings of your camera and all that stuff well then it's great because you can have the monitor like right here and you can control everything uh, now the one thing that this will not do obviously through the Bluetooth is, is it cannot send the video signal. It's not so much the the problem with the monitor or you know it's or, or maybe the camera. Well, I guess it's kind of a fault of the camera because the camera uses um, Bluetooth to connect. If it was Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi does have enough bandwidth to actually send a video signal. Bluetooth signal is not enough bandwidth to send actual 
video signal, so because of that, you can't wirelessly send video. But you still, for example, like let's say right now I have this short HDMI cable, but if you had like a really long HDMI cable, then I could be sitting here, have the, my camera over there, and I can still see on the monitor what I'm recording, but I can then use the, the this monitor to control my camera. And like I showed you, you can change all the settings about it, even including uh, the focus. And I think that's where this is going to be really handy. Like even if, if, let's say, if you had this monitor like up on a on some kind of a gimbal, and you have it on a gimbal, and you have it connected, obviously, so you can see what the camera sees through the HDMI. But let's say you want to be able to control focus, uh, then you can control the focus now using the little slider here. So again. As you can see, I can go, and it's pretty damn responsive. Is you know that's one of the things that I really like about it. So, very accurate, very responsive, and as you can see, I can go in and kind of pull the focus there with it. So that's uh, that's a really cool, I think, feature is the fact that you basically have like a wireless follow focus system built into this. Not only that, but like I showed you with the with the ZCam, if you have the the Nano, you know, the Tilta Nano, for example, follow focus or zoom or whatever motor. It, because let's say you're using the camera with a, like a manual cinema lenses, then again, you can still do this. So you can control it, you can have presets. So really, really cool. And then if you want, you can just have a clear scre screen with just a start and stop button. Um, so that's, I think that's like the main thing that I really love about this monitor is the fact that it's not just a really nice looking display that's very bright, but it also has a, a shitload of functionality, as you can see. Aside from like the vector scope and waveforms, all that stuff, you can actually control these different cameras, and you have like actual menus that correspond to to what the camera settings are. And so, anyways, as you can see, that's a really cool thing. But now let me just kind of show you the other things about this monitor. So I'm going to turn off the camera control, um, and I'll just kind of just kind of show you around how it how it is, how it looks. Uh, the build quality on this, by the way, is awesome. Um, you're not going to be disappointed in terms of like if you're worried about it, it's durab durability and that kind of stuff. Uh, here, as you can see, you have your power on and off switch, you have your HDMI in, and you have your headphone jack. Now, here in the back, as you can see, is the Bluetooth module. So, this is something actually you have to buy extra unless you buy the bundle with uh, basically the monitor with the uh, Black Magic uh, Bluetooth module. Then, you oh, this will come with it, and then it also comes with this little cable. That you connect basically the Bluetooth module, you connect it to the monitor here. Um, but otherwise, if you just got the monitor, and let's say you're not using this uh, monitor with the packet 4K camera or, or 6K, then you don't need to get this module. And then it's a little bit thinner, lighter, because you don't have the, the module. Uh, and then you don't have this cable here in the back. Um, now, what other things you have, as you, as you can see, you have, you have the SDI in and out, uh, you have the power button, and you'll notice here the power is actually allows you to send power but uh, like into the monitor uh, but you can actually send it out of the monitor and that's like a really cool thing is that you have both in and out for the power and the reason why that's cool is for example like i said when i'm using this monitor on top of my zcam then i, I use like one of these nice uh, sony npf style batteries to power both the camera and then here on the top of this battery i have this little dc connection and then I'm using this little DC port or DC cable uh, to basically connect uh, the, the power, as you can see here, into the monitor. So then I don't need to have a battery here in the back and just makes the whole rig a lot lighter. Uh, but when I'm, for example, using this with my packet 4K or 6K cameras, which have horrible battery life, uh, then I can actually use that port to output the power through the DC. Uh, and then I can use a dummy battery that I put in there and I will actually power my camera in, in that case. So we'll actually take the power basically from the battery that's on the back of the monitor and send it out into the, uh, the, the, the actual camera. So it's cool to have that possibility to both send in or out the power through there. And then up here on the Bluetooth module itself, you have the mo motor and then the camera here uh, ports out. This is going to be basically for your your Tilta, um, you know, motor, for example, if you want to control the, the, the follow focus or things like that. So, th so you have that there. Now, let me go here to the other side. And here on this side, you're going to see a big, big vent. So this is what's going to basically where all of the heat is going to be exhausted so that it keeps this monitor cool. And then here on the top, as you can see, you have those four custom buttons that you can again reprogram. 
And then here you have the, the menu thing that you can navigate. So uh, again, I can exit the menu here. I can navigate it this way. As you can see, pretty straightforward. So now the question probably you guys have is, is this a perfect monitor? Uh, well, there is no such thing, I think, as perfect anything. <laughs> We're all flat, including the things that we create. But um, this thing does have, I, I would say, a few things maybe that I wish it would have, uh, but they're not the end of the world. One thing I wish it did have is that, as you, you saw, it has the SDI in and out. It does not have uh, the um, uh, HDMI out. So if you want to loop through an HDMI signal, unfortunately, you can't do it. Uh, there is actually here on the bottom, I forgot to show you, uh, like there's other ports here for the camera control cable. Uh, and then you have it for the, the USB here. Uh, unfortunately, there is no HDMI out. Now you do have the SDI out and it will actually cross convert from HDMI to SDI. So if you have a wireless video system that's SDI, then it's not a problem. Um, another thing uh, that's kind of maybe, you just have to be aware of it, is that when you have it in the highest setting, the brightness, which right now I don't have it on that, but let's say if I'm filming outside, in that case, it will get hot if you set it to the highest settings. And also because it's built actually from a very nice uh, aluminum here, uh, the whole monitor is very solidly built. Uh, so because of that though, because it's, it is a metal, it will actually, the whole monitor basically, all the metal, metal parts do tend to get a little bit hot. Like right now, I feel the warmth. I can touch it here and I feel the warmth, but it's not burning me. But if you have it on for a long time at the highest setting, it will get pretty damn hot. So in that case, you can keep it cool, but you have to actually then in, uh, turn on the, the high fan settings. So uh, you'll go here to system config. And here, if you go to the bottom, you'll go if you see right now, I have it set to in low mode because I don't have it in the highest thing, the brightness. But if I put it to high, I don't know if you guys can hear that fan because I can hear it. That's something to be aware of is that in the bright, the brightest setting, it will get hot. To keep it cool, you got to turn on the fan to the highest setting. And then if you do that and you want to record sound, you won't be able to do it. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, but again, for me, it's I had never found this to be a problem because usually I just put the fan, like I said, to the, the lowest setting and it's okay. And I can still use it in the highest brightness, it just will just get damn hot. So you got to be careful. See, the second you put it to low the fan, then it's it's not a problem. And I guess that's something, I mean, there's there's just nothing that port keys or the, the, the engineers of port, port keys could have done, I guess, about it because it is such a small, I guess, device. And, and so, so much power, so much processing power is packed into it that it's just, you know, and also that really bright screen that it's going to get hot. So you either let it get hot or you, like I said, you turn on the fan. Uh, but otherwise, there's really nothing else that I can complain about this monitor. It is a great monitor, great quality display. Like I said, aside from it just being bright, it's like nice and accurate, very sharp. It's a full 1080p display, by the way. Um, you can, you know, zoom in you still, for like, example, if you want to adjust your focus and all that stuff, like I said, you can zoom in so you can still see clearly. But I find that most of the time, I, just by looking like at, at, at the display the way it is like that, without having to zoom in, I can still see like all the details because it is such a nice sharp display. Uh, and then, you know, you have the focus speaking, you have all those other features. So very cool little monitor. So now all of you guys who are wondering about what the hell it is exactly that I had attached to all these different cameras over the last year. Uh, I've had it, well, I've had it almost a year now, that this monitor. Uh, well, this is this is it, it's the BM5 monitor. If you guys are out there looking for a good monitor that has all these other cool functionalities, then uh, definitely give this one a try. Uh, and if, for those of you who do have it, let me know what you think about it. Like maybe, because I don't have so much experience using this to control some of the other cameras, uh, like the Canon cameras especially, and if anybody out there has used this to control the Canon cameras, let me know. Is it Does it work smoothly? Does it not work smoothly? Um, so that not only me, but other people who are watching this video can, can also find out that information. Uh, but anyways, uh, otherwise, as you can see, there's a plenty of good things about this monitor and two things that maybe are, are I wish could be improved upon, but it's not a deal breaker, at least not for me. So anyways, if you guys want to get this monitor, follow the links in the description. I'll provide it as always. And uh, and also, if you haven't already, subscribe to my newsletter by heading over to my website at tomantosfilms.com. 
and this way you'll be notified via my newsletter whenever I do uh, like new gear reviews, but also tutorials or meetups or things like that. Uh, anyways, that's it. My name is Tom, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!